Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in today. We're going to cover identity management in this week's installation of our virtual care webinar series. Um, just because there's a lot of important considerations as clinics in Alberta deal with um, or get ready for the onboarding of thousands of patients to secure mail through the My Health Record portal, um, the, the government of Alberta's My Health Record. Um, so people can now sign up for their own on their own uh, and they are looking for your clinic when they do. So it's important to be ready for that. Um, and we do get a lot of questions around how do I change my account? How do I um, how do I change my name? Maybe maybe a marital status changed, or or maybe someone new has taken over a role in a clinic and they're taking over that inbox. How do we update the email address it's attached to? How do we update the name? So we'll get into that. And we'll do sort of an in-depth demo of what seems like a pretty simple um, task, but we'll get to all the details of it. So uh, just quickly. Um, Audio, should have mentioned this first. Uh, recommended is computer audio. Um, you can dial in um, and use these numbers to get into the call you see on the, the your go-to webinar panel. Um, and we obviously don't recommend no audio. So that won't, uh, you won't hear anything. Uh, with me today doing the demonstration is, is Pooja, our training manager. So Pooja handles all our secure mail training organization as well as um, our privacy training that we do as well. Um, so Pooja will take us through the demo today as Mark is on vacation. Um, so this is what we're looking at. This is what a directory listing is. Um, so this is the Bright Squid listing in the directory. You can actually, if you search, someone searches you in the directory, they can click on uh, secure mail. Uh, uh, right here, and that will send uh, or, or you can start composing a message. You can see all the members of the organization here. So we have um, our different staff members, so you can put your prefix in, in there, um, and we'll have that address as well. You want to make sure that your, your clinic name is right. You want to make sure your phone number is right, and you want to have the address because that's a lot of times how people um, identify to make sure that they're dealing with the right clinic because there is, you know, obviously instances of clinic having similar or the same names. Um, so there are over 73,000 patients um, and over 54,000 clinics use BrightScript. Um, if we add up all the numbers, we actually have getting close to now, actually it's significantly over these numbers, getting close to 200,000 users on the system. Um, and we want to make sure that people know who you are um, we have seen instances, you know, uh, we had someone take our, our privacy training the other day, and when they completed the training, they got a certificate, and the certificate is generated with a name on the account. And so the certificate was generated with the clinic's name because that's how they'd set up the individual account. So you should be setting up an individual account for each person within your clinic with an individual name, which obviously has privacy implications as well. You want to make sure that you can identify the person who is viewing the information um, because that does uh, fall under uh, disclosure rules for privacy. So we want to make sure that everything you're doing is trackable and recordable. So um, patients will be able to find you more easily. Make sure they're that you, your, your clinic name is set up uh, with the name that people know you as, the name that's on your door. Um, some people do come in and you know, they may register as the professional business name or the professional corp name um, that's on their business certificate. Um, so you wanna make sure that individual names are put on. You don't wanna have uh, members of your organization uh, with names like front desk. Um, that's what the virtual front desk does. And if you have questions about setting up your virtual front desk, there's we've done a few webinars on it. You can go back and look at, at the virtual care webinars, uh, the blog on our website. Um, and this helps you keep your contact information up to date too. So uh, you'll be discovered by new referring clinics, new patients, and make sure that people know that you're the right group that they should be reaching out to and that they want to touch. Um, now, as I said, all employees should have their own email address and their own account. Uh, we do get some questions around, hey, do I have to have uh, everybody have their own account or do they? can we all share one? Sharing is not recommended because it's not compliant. Now, uh, the reason for that is, as I just mentioned, we need to be able to track access. So if everybody's sharing an account and, and something happens and a patient somehow decides that they believe that your clinic may have been a source of some of their private information getting out. Um, and you can't go back and say, well, it was Dave or it was Wendy that looked at the, the information. All you can say is like, everybody who had access to this username and password saw that information and we don't know who that is. 
uh, because we just give it out to people who work as a temp on Saturdays as well. So you want to make sure, and, and from a staff access standpoint, you want to make sure that everybody has their own account because you can, you can create an account for anybody that needs to have one as long as they're a staff. If you're not a clinician user, it's it's going to up your subscription level. Um, but but if you add any staff, even on a temporary basis, you can add and remove them. And again, we have demonstrations on how to do that quite easily as well. Um, but you want to make sure that everybody's got their own account. Um, and we're updating them regularly. So as needed. So if email addresses change, maybe you change the domain name in your, in your email addresses, um, everything after the at. Uh, changes, um, you want to make sure that that's updated in your secure mail account as well so you can make those changes and Pooja is going to take us through a demonstration how to do that. But this does help maintain a level of compliance. You want to make sure that you're administering the clinic's account in a way that is really um, uh, clean and concise so that you know who has access to the information, who has access to the shared inbox, for example, um, you want to have those accounts be named as individuals. And there are settings you can use to make sure that those people aren't aren't messageable. So you don't want everybody, and everybody in your clinic doesn't want to be receiving messages through secure mail from from patients, say, or other professionals that might find them and decide they want to message them directly instead of your clinic. Um, you can still maintain the idea that and the structure that. All of your messages go through your your shared inbox, um, and 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 still have everybody having access without having to worry about them having to check their personal email address as well or email inbox secure inbox as well, um, because you can essentially shut off access to that inbox. But you do want to make sure that everybody who is is going to be using it or should be using secure mail has their very own named account. Um, you can use uh, personal email addresses, um, and you can use, um, you know, services like Gmail that allow you to create a new free account very, very easily. And there's lots of different services like that now available. So um, I'm just going to get in here and change some things over so that we can hear from Pooja. Um, if uh, you bear with me just one second, and we'll bring her on. Hi everyone, this is Pooja Kamath and I'm the training manager with BrightSquid. Today we are going to talk about a very commonly asked question and that is how to make changes to your personal details within your secure mail account. Personal details consist of first name, last name, prefix, email address, password, your contact numbers, etc. For example, we have received several inquiries from clinicians that have wanted to edit their last names and prefixes when their marital status was changed. Also, there are situations when a new employee is handed over a previous employee's account so the new employee can have access to all the previous secure mail message exchange that has happened with patients and other healthcare providers. In such a scenario, the account needs to be modified with the personal details of the new employee. Regardless of the situation, in order to make changes, uh, a mandatory requirement is knowing the login details of the account holder, that is email address and password. If you do not know the login details, that is okay too. Just call us on the support line and we can help you with the rest. In this case, I know my login details, so I'm going to log into my secure mail account with my registered email address and password. For that, I first go uh, on health.brightsquid.com on my browser, uh, which will bring me to this page, and I enter my registered email address, followed by my password to get into my account. Once I'm into my account, I will click on settings, which is which is on the left bottom of the page. And I see I come to this particular page where, where I see several of these tabs. Uh, to make all the edits to my personal information, I'll be working in the first tab, which is called as personal details. Now, this is fairly simple. Uh, I want to just modify a few details here. For instance, I'd like to change my prefix from Miss to Mrs. Uh, my last name from Kamat to Subnis. Uh, and I'd like to update my mobile phone number as well.
and I'd like to save these changes for which I scroll to the bottom of the page and click on the save button, which is on the right. It says that the user profile has been updated successfully. Let's scroll back on top and see if those changes are reflecting. So I'd made three changes, which is Mrs. Subness and my mobile number and all these changes are saved. The other thing that I may want to change here is my email address. So currently my email address is pooja.k at brightquit.com and I'd like to change that to a Gmail address. Let's see how to do that. So you click on change, which is on the left corner here and enter the new email address that you'd like to start uh, using as your uh, secure mail registered email address. I'm going to enter a Gmail address. Pooja secure mail at gmail.com. Now, please note that when you enter the password, it is the same password that you had used to log into your account, which is your existing password. Once you've entered the information, you click on save. You see uh, a message that says that a confirmation link has been sent to the new email address. So I will now check my Gmail to see if I've received any confirmation email to verify my email account. Please note that it usually takes uh, less than a minute for this to uh, come into your system to come into your uh, email account. So just have the patience and also access the latest link. So as you see here, I've received an email uh, that uh, will confirm the change request. So I click on the email and I see a blue button that says confirm. Once I click on this, it will verify my new email address. So I go back to my account. I will still not see the changes reflecting here. So I will log out and log in again, but this time using the new email. with the same password because we've still not changed the password. Let's go back into settings within personal details and you see uh, my previous email which was pooja.k at brightsquid.com is now changed to my new Gmail. There you go, it's as simple as that. You may also want to change your password and that's again very simple as well. Just click on change, enter your current password Enter the new password. Please note that your password should be at least eight characters long containing one or more digits and needs to have uh, an uppercase letter. So I am going to do that. And save. So through this demo, I have changed my email address as well as the password. Let's see if that works. I'm going to log out and try to sign in using my new email and my previous password. Let's see if it shows us any error. It does, it says that I have entered an invalid username or password. The password was incorrect in this case. So let's add the one that was updated. There you go, it works. So this is uh, the way you change uh, your personal details to your account. Um, there are other things that you can change as well, uh, but we're not going to talk about that because that's uh, already been discussed and addressed in the previous webinars. Um, and this is very, very easy and simple for you to start acting on right now. Uh, my simple suggestion to you would be that the minute this webinar gets over, please practice. Just open your secure mail account and play around with your personal details for you to get the hang of it. Uh, that's it for today. Um, and I would like to say thank you for attending this webinar and over to Jeff now. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Pooja. Um, yeah, so we'll wrap up really quickly. Um, if you have any questions or want to get further secure mail training, always please, uh, you, know, you can register for a training. We have events scheduled out through mid-July, Tuesdays and Thursdays at lunchtime Mountain. Um, it's a it's a hour-long 
session, but um, the the survey results we have show that that people learn a lot out of getting it, uh, out of taking it, um, and uh, and believe that their secure mail usage will go way up um, because of it once people learn how to set up their account and what they should be using it for. Uh, and we do see uh, clinics after they take their training um, send um, you know way more than twice as many messages as the average. So um, it'll help you learn how to use your secure mail account properly, how to set it up to make sure that all messages are going through that shared inbox for uh, more appropriate messages or more appropriate management of patient messages. Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks, Pooja, and we'll see you next time.